Good morning, it's time for Daily Chapel. The text is Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. The Reverend Mark Kiesling's preaching. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS, International Mission, and Ministry to the Armed Forces. For today's chapel service, we will be using Daily Prayer for Morning, found on page 295 of the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing our hymn number 818 in LSB, In Thee is Gladness, 818. In thee is gladness, amid all sadness, Jesus, sunshine of my heart. By thee are given the gifts of heaven, Souls awakest, our bonds thou breakest, who trust thee surely, has built securely, he stands forever, hallelujah. Our hearts are pining to see the shining, darling or living, to thee or cleaving, not can us Change them with a breath. Wherefore the story tell of his glory with hearts and voices, all that rejoices in him forever. Alleluia. We shout for gladness, triumph for sadness, love him and praise him and still shall Forever. Our reading for today is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But, though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart, or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is our Easter victory cry. Jesus has swallowed death and the grave in victory. What a joyous celebration this is. So, it might seem strange to spend time in the book of Lamentation in the Easter season. Our reading from chapter 3 is the one text that makes an appearance in our lectionaries or possibly in our devotions. Reading the book of Lamentations, quite frankly, is difficult. God had used the book's author, Jeremiah, to warn his people about God's coming wrath and to bring them to repentance. Unlike the false prophets of his day, 
Jeremiah proclaimed, proclaimed truth and preached what was truly best for God's people. However, Jeremiah's words fell on deaf ears. His words were ignored by a people who wanted no correction or obstruction to their sinful lifestyle. Eventually, God would do as Jeremiah had foretold, and Lamentations contains the prophet's lament over God's wrath poured out upon the kingdom of Judah. In reading the entire book in my preparation, I was reminded again that this book is transparent about the trials, pain, and suffering of life and the ramification of sin. Jeremiah laments the destruction of God's holy city, holy temple, and his beloved but sinful people. It is vivid. Images of bombed-out European cities after World War II or of other war-ravaged cities danced in my head. Death. Desolation. Darkness. I can only imagine what war like that is like and pray it ceases and never happens again. The book is also clear about God's activity in punishing His people. This book is a place where God teaches us about His holiness, His wrath against sin, and His steadfast love. God is faithful to who He is. He is holy. He is powerful. God is merciful, compassionate, and shows steadfast love. He finds no delight in punishing His beloved people. He punished them for their sin, but He didn't abandon them. In our lives, we too know laments. We lament how society is deaf to God's word. We lament over our sin, though we ourselves are like sheep and go astray and do not listen to our good shepherd. We lament over the weight of our own sin and how it damages our relationships with God and others. And in our current context, we or others we know lament over job loss, loss of significant events, sickness, and even death. And our God hears us in our lament. It is the steadfast love and compassion of our God which holds our reading together. The Lord is our portion, therefore we hope in Him. We have hope because of the kind of God we have, and that He did not reject His people forever. Out of His remnant would come a Savior, Jesus. God laid His wrath for sin upon Christ for our benefit, so that faithful people would never again be destroyed. We deserve the destruction described in Lamentations in Jeremiah, but Christ received it instead. Christ's mouth was put in the dust. He gave his cheek and his life to the one who strikes, and insults were thrown at him as he died on the cross. In the face of death, our Lord lamented, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God forsook his own Son so that we might be his own people, and he promises that he will never abandon us. 1 John 4, 10-11 states, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Jesus' words of, It is finished, showed that God loves us and that He knows our soul's deepest laments and has answered them. The Holy Spirit gives us hope now in our life and strengthens us as we wait on the Lord. The Holy Spirit has worked through this current struggle. God's chosen people are being strengthened by the proclamation of the Word, even though they can't be together as they desire. They hear God's call to repent and trust in Him above all things, as so many earthly things crumble around us. God's people are loving their neighbors as God so loves us. God gives us words for our witness to people who lament their actions or are searching for hope in the middle of this pandemic which has hit our world. Some realize how they have exiled themselves from God, their strong hope. And we, God's people, are proclaiming the good news of His kingdom, His mercy, His steadfast love, and His faithfulness. By God's grace, we have learned from previous trials, and will learn from this one, to be ready to respond in trying times for the good of others. We pray that others will know the love of Jesus. We tell of His glory with hearts and voices. We shout for gladness that he has triumphed over sadness so that others will hear. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue by confessing our faith and prayer. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Visit, O Lord, the homes in which your people dwell. Keep all harm and danger far from your people, especially those who find themselves lonely or in despair. Grant that your people may dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels, sharing in your blessings of love and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving Shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word, and bless all those who serve us on your behalf. We especially pray, pray for Julie Lutz, who serves in Papua New Guinea. Bless Julie and us especially when we are persecuted for the faith or suffer for the sake of the good that honors you and is obedient to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Shepherd, your wounds are our healing and your voice calls us to, be, calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on the behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind or in need of healing or comfort. We especially pray for Anna, Arlisa, Matt, Jackie, Frank, Jenna, Larry, Fred, Barbara, Alexander, Neil, David, Mark, Ron, Kent, Eleanor, Kathy, Boyce, Scott, Joel, Roger, Alan, and Jan, and all those we name in our hearts. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be also with the unemployed and the distraught, and return them to health and livelihood. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. Today we pray for Julie Lutz, who serves the Lord in Papua New Guinea. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.